embrace the economic sock. That's the message from a Washington Post columnist in this week's Washington Post. Which day it was? I can't even remember. I got so drunk after reading this column. Hey, everybody. I'm Steve Green with Bill Whittle and Scott Ott, and this is Right Angle, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. Gentlemen, I think this column was actually published on Tuesday, the day we're recording this. And uh, Michelle Maynard is a columnist I'd never heard of. Apparently, she does a lot of stuff for the Midwest. But the Washington Post saw this greatness that she'd written and decided it had to go nationwide so the comrades from coast to coast could absorb the glorious Pravda. Um, Maynard writes that rather than living constantly on the verge of throwing a fit and risking taking it out on overwhelmed servers, struggling shop owners, or late arriving delivery people, we do ourselves a favor by consciously lowering expectations. Now, part of this I can actually get behind. You don't, it's not, it's not your waitress's fault that she's the only one that's working the floor that day and it's a busy day. There just aren't enough workers right now. It's not the store clerk's fault that they can't get goods in. Um, Scott, it's not the uh, it's not the furniture salesman's fault that the delivery has been delayed again because of uh, because of shipping uh, shipping troubles. But shouldn't we keep our expectations high, Scott? Shouldn't we uh, shouldn't we not learn to settle for less, which is what this column is arguing, that this new normal is something we have to embrace? Yeah, I I think your balance is a good one there. On the one hand, uh, and and this is in general, you don't have to wait for a situation like this to happen, but people have this tendency to treat the frontline worker as kind of the corporation, (laughs) you know, because you're the one who has FaceTime with the customer, you are the business. And if there's any problem with that business, then we need to unload that on you. I know people are frustrated with a variety of things, including right now, tremendous delays in almost every business. I have sometimes uh, somewhat sadly and sardonically remarked that you remember when you saw on the news that they referred to it as a global pandemic? Well, both of those words are in effect. (laughs) You know, it's like they don't have an idea. I was like, why is it that my furniture is delayed? Well, it's, it's not personal. It's not about you. It's not like there's not some guy over in China or down in Georgia somewhere right now going, well, everything's shipping just fine, but let's hold back on Mrs. Jones' shipment. We, there's no need for her to experience undue joy and pleasure. So um, so I think you can strike a balance between saying, okay, yeah, in a sense, this is the way it is right now. Um, I've also occasionally, when I have a good relationship with a customer, I've said, you know what? I was raised by my grandparents who endured uh, the Great Depression and living through World War II. My grandfather fought in World War II. This is inconvenient, but it's not that. And, uh, and every, you know, people will immediately go, yeah, yeah, that's correct. And I don't mean to suggest that people getting sick or dying is inconvenient. I'm just saying that the logistical challenges that have been created or spawned or propagated or increased by this uh, situation is inconvenient, but it's not a disaster uh, for most people. Uh, that said, I think there's also a streak in every red-blooded American that says, well, what can we do to figure it out in the meantime? And that not only goes to, uh, you know, the, some big companies have recently announced that they're chartering their own um, carrier ships for those containers, those cargo ships, uh, but also just as individuals say, okay, well, let's say, you know, We're trying to get a house built right now. What are my options? What's option B? What's option C? Is there any way to use alternative materials? Is there a way to basically say, you know what? This isn't going to be the year for this to happen. We're going to, you know, kind of wrap that in a in a Ziploc bag and move on until we can we can get it. But like there's don't be defeated by things you can't control. And I guess that's the that's the fundamental essence of my message in life is don't allow your emotional state to be determined by people outside, by extrinsic factors, by things that you can't alter. 
uh, you control one thing, and it's not the trajectory of the of the uh, cargo ship, and it's not how many drivers are signed up for the next run to you know your store. You control your attitude with regard to those things. You control the brilliance of your own mind and the innovative creativity of it. So use those resources, whether that means you're just an individual person listening to this or you're running a company. Figure out a way to deal with it. There's an old quote from Norman Vincent Peale who was attributing this to Dwight Eisenhower, who said that he had been playing cards with his mother and uh, he was complaining that he got a bad hand and his mother said, Dwight, when you get a bad hand, you just play it out. You know, you don't whine about it, figure it out, move ahead, make the best of the situation and keep moving forward. Indeed. And the thing is, the pandemic didn't cause this. The pandemic is the thing we have to endure. But the supply chain disruptions and all the rest, those are due to, to those are due to government decisions like the lockdowns that closed down the Port of Los Angeles for God knows how long. The uh, travel restrictions that kept container ships in the wrong places for months on end. Uh, we have labor shortages because Washington was handing out free money to the unemployed instead of encouraging them to go back to work. All of these problems you can point the finger to at government. It's not we have to lower our expectations. It's that we have to demand better from uh, our local governments, our state governments, and Washington, D.C., particularly where Democrats rule. Um, Bill, I guess this brings me to what I guess is my uh, my central premise of this. Aren't, aren't lowered expectations that, uh, that kind of say la vie attitude? Isn't that for ennui deflated Frenchmen and not red-blooded Americans? <laughs> It's a default condition for 99% of humanity for 99% of its history. Uh, you, you get what you expect. And, and if you raise expectations, you will get better quality. If you lower them, you'll get lower quality. It's easy to understand. I dealt with this not, not too long ago with education. If you, if you have a, a standard, let's say you need, uh, let's say you need a 90 to get an A, then Anybody who doesn't get an A realizes that they got the B or the C or the D because they didn't work hard enough. Not so much even they didn't work hard enough, they didn't get the instruction that they needed, okay? Something is missing, so here's the standard, and we fell short of the standard, so we know we have to fix whatever's here. Now, if I tell you, you can get an A if you have a 60%, then if you don't get an A, you, you, you basically you have basically reduced the amount of work, the amount of excellence, the amount of study, the amount of everything that you have to put into something to achieve the same results. So as you continue to lower test scores, you make people stupider because they don't have to do the learning needed in order to clear the higher bar. And the lower you lower that bar, the stupider people become. And the exact same thing is true for a standard of living expectation. The reason that, that uh, the Soviets put up with what they put up with was because they were primarily an agrarian culture. I mean, a, a crummy, badly built apartment with, with the same wallpaper and the same telephone as everybody else is a step up from living in a village, but it's a step down from Beverly Hills. So where is your expectation level and, and what are you willing to put up with? But lower your expectations should be the, the motto of the Democratic Party. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the second I heard you talk about this on the backstage show, Steve, first thing I thought of was Jimmy Carter saying, well, you know, uh, well, we don't make enough oil. We're utterly dependent on the Arabs. So lower your thermostat and wear a sweater around the house and, and, and just accept the fact that, you know, that all of the things that we work so hard for are things of the past and, and, and just get used to lowering your expectations. Then, and then in a, a month later, he says, there's some strange kind of national malaise that has affected the American people. Can't figure it out. Yet, civilization, life, humanity is about it, humanity is about making things better. Let me rephrase that. Western thought is about making things better, about proving improving on nature. And uh, Stephen, I tell you this. You'd be pleased to know I did a moving back to America last week, and I mentioned you mentioning uh, Gilligan Unbound. Oh, and great you, book, you, yeah. You, you talked about how Gilligan Unbound was a case of how all different parts of America could work together as a microcosm of America. But there was something in Gilligan Unbound that, that I thought was really interesting too, and that was that when they landed on the island, they didn't go native. 
they decided to build an America in on the island. We're going to have we're going to have, you know, coconut powered radios and coconut powered lie detectors. And we're going to have giant stages where we can have our beauty pageants. They, they didn't just say, well, we're boned here. So I guess we might as well put a couple of palm fronds up against a, a, a tree and, and not shave again, you know, for the rest of our lives. They just decided they were going to maintain as close to the standards of what they had. And, and so they did. And this, this constant clarion call to lower your standards is what societies in decline do. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So we should be raising our standards. These problems are caused by the government. 40% of all of the uh, material goods that come into this country come in through Long Beach. I personally didn't know this and I should have until our backstage show when you told me that uh, the city of Los Angeles or, or was it California, California has decreed that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, California's wonderful AB5 bill, which is designed to put people into unions so that unions can have some more money so they can buy more votes for Democrats. If you are an owner operator of a truck, you cannot move cargo out of Long Beach. And you also said that because of environmental restrictions, if your truck is less than is more than three years old, you cannot come to Long Beach unless you come in an electric truck. Now, these are just cases of government officials blowing smoke about how unbelievably progressive they are to small numbers of very loud interest groups like unions and the green lobby. Meanwhile, there's no Christmas for Americans. And this is how Democrats decide things. If an interest group is going to be affected or hurt, we will go and protect them and the American people can just go pound sand. And pretty soon there's going to be more than sand we're going to start pounding. Yeah, indeed. Uh, you know, folks, I just realized I could wrap this up so very, very, very quickly. And you're welcome in advance for that. All of these problems created by government, almost exclusive to places run by Democrats, whether it is California, New York, Michigan, or Washington, D.C., this is the reason not to lower your expectations. Because when it comes to Democrats, they couldn't possibly get any lower. And that's your right angle on that. Brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.